And we look at the Boston end. Number one, Rogie Bashan in that. The two games he's been in, he's given up 11 goals for 6.35 average. He has lost the one game, and he was pulled in that other game. And then we look at Jill Malas, the goaltender who started the series for Minnesota, gave up four goals in that overtime game. The North Stars won his average 3.75, and he has won the only game he's played in. Taken up by the Bruins, and here they come with a three on two. Crowder sailing across the line, off for Jonathan. A great save by Malas. And it was a big save, Bob. The North Stars. Hartsburg and the North Stars finally get it out to center ice, but Boston is really dangerous thus far here in the first period. There's a chance for Neil Broughton. A shot went wide by Palmer. Back out in front, Broughton is out. He scores! Palmer put that shot in. He was staying right on the, on the side there. He had the initial shot. The puck came back to him. And he put it ahead to give the North Stars the go-ahead goal here at 3.36 of the first period. Watch the replay right here. You see Palmer takes a shot, but watch where he stays. He doesn't get mesmerized by the puck. He stays right here. Nobody picks him up. And he got it, and really it was kind of a golf shot coming up over top of Rogi Vashon. That goal once again at 3.34 to give the North Stars a 1-0 lead. Arcot on the left wing now for the Boston Bruins. Out for Steve Casper. Casper getting it over for Crowder. The puck was behind him and played now by Timmy Young. Brink wide on the left wing for Big Steve Payne. A five-goal score in the playoffs for Young. Out in front, they score! Oh, McAdam! What a play by Timmy Young. The North Stars come right back in just one minute and 33 seconds later score the second goal of this game to go ahead 2 to nothing on a perfectly executed play by Timmy Young over to Al McAdam. All he had to do was put a stick on the ice and put it in. Watch McAdam, the defenseman's down, and bingo, Ro Rogi is 10 feet outside of the net. And the North Stars, they're enjoying their success right now. We look at these fans, and they're just exuberant. The enthusiasm they're showing, and that helps this team. Here's a two-on-one break again. Here comes McAdam and Young. McAdam a shot of save. Rebound goes to McAdam. McAdam in the corner, back out for Payne. He was spun around in the Bruins. Goes into the North Star zone. Stars a little sloppy there. And O'Connell keeps it in for the Bruins. It comes back for Dickey. Redmond a drive. And Malosh again with a big save. Off now for Middleton. Middleton for Boston. Drops it back for O'Connell a shot. Another big save and a rebound. And then Brad Maxwell pokes the rebound right back to Gilly. And Gilly sits on it. We'll get a face off in the North Star end. One minute and 12 seconds left in the penalty time to O'Reilly. Again, Foster coming up with the puck for the Boston Bruins, and despite scoring the fourth, a two-on-one for the North Star. Smith to Cicerelli. He scores! Now, just as Boston looked like they were going to do a great job of killing it off, the Bruins made a mistake, which left the North Stars a two-on-one, and Bobby Smith, who's deadly with his passing, hit Dino, and the people's choice rippled the twine back behind the John. Well, that time, watch Foster here. He... He had his head up, but he lost the puck. He misjudged it, and Bobby Smith picked it up. And look at the move by Dino. Fakes the goaltender. He's down. He goes to the side, and bingo, it's in the net of the North Stars lead by a score of three to nothing. Who came back? McNabb bumped over there by Maxwell. There's a shot, six saved by Malash, who has really been sharp here. McNabb a shot. That goes wrong. Boston has had the opportunities. McConnell is shot. And Malash again. Boy, is he playing well. Well, he's going back and forth like a pendulum on a grandfather clock. He's just going from side to side in that crease. And I'll tell you, the Boston Bruins had some good opportunities. They're going. Stopped by Vachon. Buck goes loose. Carlson for Dino to Bobby. Oh, what a save by Vachon. Rogie Vachon keeping the Bruins in the game. That might be the save of the playoff. It could have been, but uh, you watch Bobby had to reach for that puck, even with the long stick that he's got in those long arms he was just a little bit out of the way for the puck when it came to him and uh, Rogie was able to just watch right here we'll pick it up once again Boston not doing a very good job in their own end see right there he's trying to direct it in just not enough maybe to try and get it up a little bit higher here with a cast on his ankle broke his ankle on a shot by Steve Kristoff McAdam with the puck for Minnesota back behind the net out in front they score Steve Payne, Stevie Payne scores another goal as Painter's sixth goal of the series to give the North Stars a four to nothing lead. 
Watch right here. McAdams takes the defenseman off the puck, and then Al keeps on going. He picks it up here, and Painter gets the puck once. The defensemen hit each other there. Marcotte and Redmond collided, and then Payne gets that loose puck, and he's able to put it away for them. With 1.27 remaining in this first period, the North Stars lead in this third, and what could be the decisive game on the best of five series? They lead by a score of four to nothing. Out in front for Dino, that just failed to connect, and Bork for Boston, heads it out for Foster. Foster at center ice, 20 seconds to play in the period. He drops it back now for Mike O'Connell. O'Connell across the North Star line, fakes the shot, he scores! Fakes the shot, moved into a better shooting position, and then O'Connell let it rip. And he beat Jill Malash on the stick side low. A perfectly placed shot by O'Connell. And the Bruins pick up a shorthanded goal and make it now a 4-1 hockey game. And for O'Connell, that is his first goal of the playoff. You see O'Connell picking up the loose puck. Boston got him from Chicago for Secord. Faked once, moved in, and then put a perfect shot there, beating Jill Malash. And Boston picks up the shorthanded goal with just 13 seconds remaining in the period. The right side for Ken Eric Anderson. Kenta. Goes around for it, try to play it back out in front. Couldn't do it, gets the puck back. Off for Bobby Smith, Smith out for McAdams, stopped by Bajon, the rebound, Anderson, stopped by Bajon, and we'll get a face off to the right of the Boston goal. Nice broadcast, comes your way from the Mets. Picked up by Al McAdams, back for Giles, Giles over for Gordy Roberts. Roberts takes the shot, Bajon the save, the rebound! Other save by Bajon, and he holds on on the doorstep as O'Connell and McAdam back behind the goal. Mark's shot was knocked down by Ken Eric Anderson. They battle for it along the board. Kenta getting it out to center ice. Two on one for the North Stars. Greg Smith and Tim Young. Greg Smith tied to feed it across. Oh, and puts it in the net! The <laughs> puck was broken up by the defenseman O'Connell. Greg Smith knocked it off the <laughs> short-handed goal. What a way to get an assist. Minnesota's fifth goal of the game. That goal coming at 18.05. Greg Smith watched the defenseman here. He, he had no place to go then. He really blew it here. He lost his balance, and Greg Smith squirted it right underneath the leg of Royal Tanner Rogie Vashon. That is Greg Smith's first goal of the playoff series. Well, you can just sense the frustration on Boston. Watch him on the ice here. And uh, after the whistles are just nonchalantly going to their bench. They're not showing any enthusiasm at all. The captain, the senior, one of the senior members of the Boston Bruins, along with Jean Rattel, the captain there, Wayne Cashman. Jerry Cheevers behind the bench, not looking too happy at this time. Cheevers was joking before the game with North Star captain Paul Schmier. Schmier walks out of the dressing room for Minnesota, and uh, Cheevers asked uh, Paul if he was playing tonight. Paul said, nope, not playing tonight again, and Cheevers says, we're just not getting any breaks. <laughs> Puck is picked up by Casper. He's stripped of the puck by Roberts, but it's kept in by McCrimmon. A big save by Malosh. The rebound, another save by Malosh on Crowder. Crowder couldn't get it up, and Gilly had the stick on the ice. Tonight's broadcast comes your way from the Mets. To the North Stars, Dino out to center and into the Boston zone it goes. And the season ticks down for the Bruins still, 14.42 to go. Now we got a little thing, altercation going in front of the Boston bench. Jonathan and Dino Cicerelli. And we also have one in front of the North Star, or in front of the Boston. Dino Trotty as well. Go. That started because Cicerelli. Carlson is going to work over there. He's got one Bruin tied up, McCrimmon, trying to stop. Uh, I don't think it's. Brad Maxwell has now come out on the ice for the North Stars. And he's the one that took care of Jonathan the last time. But Maxie's got to watch it. You don't need a suspension here. No, you don't. But what happened there now, look, Jonathan is the first player off of the either bench. And what happened was Cic Cicerelli was knocked into the bench, and uh, somebody grabbed him and did something to him, and then he challenged him, and Jonathan jumped off the bench. So he should get thrown out of the game. And a fine at this stage of the game. It's just a little frustration coming out on Boston's part. It's also a little bit of a mismatch. Jonathan did a pretty good job on Dino, and it's very frustrating, I'm sure, for the North Stars to stand by and see it. It is, but Jonathan will be gone out of the game. You can, he's got to be. There's Larry Ness, John Steichen, the North Star training staff. Jonathan's still standing here. Now Jonathan wants to get back into it. Greg Smith is into it. You can see Bork there. Getting our cameras obscured. We'll cut to the other side there. A lot of tugging going on right now. Brad Maxwell 
really knocked Jonathan, Jonathan around John at the Boston Garden. Jonathan doesn't appear to want too much to do with that one. Now Dino Cicerelli wants to get back into it with somebody. There's Maxwell and Jonathan actually talking to him, saying, I got you the garden, try it here, and I'll push it through center right. Crowd scanning Dino. McCrimmon skating to the penalty box, and the time he said Jonathan in all probability would be thrown out of the game. Now going back for the Bruins inside his own zone, out to center ice with it. 315 left in the extra man. Bobby Lalonde now for Boston cutting in. The Bruins are short-handed. They score! Bobby Lalonde beats Malash on a backhander. And the Bruins have come up with a short-handed goal here. And it's now 5-2 North Stars with 850 to play. And that's the Bruins' second short-handed goal in this game. That's only their second goal of the game, so uh, they do better, it seems, when they are short What O'Connell makes a good play right here to Lalonde. He cuts in across. Roberts is back a little bit too far. He should have moved up there at that point. He kept backing in and leaving that avenue open for him. I think if there has been one disappointment, Tommy, in this playoff series for the North Stars, it has been the power play. Homer. Palmer heads it up for Smith, four minutes and 30 seconds to play, as McNabb wraps it away and off for Bobby Lalonde. Now it's Lalonde laying it out to center, O'Connell turning, drops it off for Lalonde, Lalonde carries across the line, takes a shot, he scores! Bobby Lalonde! That goal coming at 15.42, a big shot and another short-handed goal by Boston. That's their third one in this game. Here, here's a lot. He has got a shot. Let me tell you, he lets it go and it's high, and it caught the upper left corner of that net. Left hand side of Jules Malash. So it's now a 5-3 game in favor of the North Stars. Four minutes and 18 seconds to go. And if the Bruins were to strike for a fourth one here, it could be interesting a little bit. I think Boston let up. The North Stars went right down to their tempo, and all of a sudden they find themselves in a little bit of a tighter contest than the one time that uh, it was or was thought to be. Mort takes a shot. Malash makes the save and holds on. We mentioned earlier we had an intense first period. The second period was sort of lullaby time. The third period wasn't much until the altercation at the 518 mark. Then it settled down again. But Dill made a couple of strange calls, and suddenly it's five to three. Game number four at Quebec tomorrow night, five in Philly on Tuesday. Calgary leads Chicago two games to none. They are tied tonight 4-4 at the Chicago Stadium. And Chicago must win, or they are out. And there is the empty Boston net, as Rogie is out. And the faceoff now goes to the right side of the Minnesota goal, and Jill Malash and Steve Payne tried to get it out. O'Connell keeps it in. Oh, and it just deflected wide. That just square wide. Craig Hartsford, you saw him dump the puck there. He works on that quite a bit. He can dump the puck high. Payne scores! And the North Stars have iced it 6-3. to three. So a game that looked like it was in the bag for a while. Then again, as we mentioned, some strange calls by Greg Medill putting Boston back in along with those short-handed goals. And now the North Stars have eliminated the Bruins. Payne picking up his second goal here. Timmy Young really causing the Boston team to lose the puck. Painter comes in, picks up the loose puck, and pops it in. That goal coming at 18:34. Stevie Payne's second game second goal of the game and also his seventh of this playoff series the score here is minnesota six boston three 24 seconds remaining on the score Boy. unless we have a rash of upsets the second round would start on the road for the north stars this thursday and friday saturday would be a travel day and the first two games of the met would be sunday the 19th of april and then monday the 20th of april the game on the 19th would start at 7.30, the game on Monday, the 20th, would start at 7 o'clock. Making a save there was Malash out to center ice. Kristoff, just five seconds to go in the series for the Bruins. Puck goes wide of Rogie Bichon. The Stars have advanced. And for Boston, the 1980-81 hockey season has come to a close. Tonight's broadcast coming your way from the Mets.